tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how a countdown timer works in Android. I've got here a simple layout of three text fields. This one says time left. I'm going to display on the second box how much, how many seconds are remaining in the timer, and the message box will show a message saying when the timer has expired. I've renamed this text field to say message underscore text view, and I've renamed this text box time left underscore text view. This will make it a little bit easier for us to access these text fields inside our Java code. Okay, with that labeling out of the way, we can move back now to our Java code. And I've got a fresh new project going here called Countdown Timer. And as is our habit, we're going to start by creating an initialization method, which is going to hold most of our code for this app. And I'll have Android Studio make the skeleton for that method. And in here, well, let me uh, start by creating some state variables. Okay, so we've taken each of the state variables and uh, casted them to their corresponding layout positions. And now in our initialization method, we're going to create the countdown timer uh, that we're going to need for our app. can see that I've already imported the countdown timer up here. Now you see as soon as I create this countdown timer uh, constructor call it fills in, Android Studio fills in the overriding methods that I need so I'm going to close this off with a semicolon so I'm basically creating the object and de defining the new class all in one step as is a common in our application. Now the constructor here is going to need uh, two numbers. The first number is how many seconds or how many milliseconds we're going to count down total. I'm going to put 10,000 there so that's going to be 10 seconds and we're going to count it off. Each tick is going to be uh, one second so I'm going to put a thousand milliseconds in there for that. Uh, and the on tick method which is going to occur every second what we're going to do simply is we're going to update the the field on our uh, layout that shows the number of seconds. And in the other method, the onFinish method, we're going to uh, mention in the message box that our timer has expired. One other thing we're going to do in this onFinish method is we're going to set the timer to zero, because otherwise the timer will get down to one and freeze. It'll never show the zero on the board if we don't put that explicitly in here. Okay, that uh, basically uh, makes up the bulk of our app. Uh, the other thing we need to do, very important, is we need to make sure we actually start the timer. So we'll just start it at the end of our initialization block. Here it is running on my emulator, and you can see that the countdown timer is working nicely. Let's see what happens when we get to the end and we see that the game over message is being displayed and we do show the zero seconds in the timer left field. Mm -hmm. 